Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this free fall problem, they tell us that a rock climber stands on the top of a 50 meter high cliff overhanging a pool of water. He throws two stones vertically downward one second apart and observes that they cause a single splash and the initial, initial speed of the first stone was two meters per second. And so for part A, they say how long after the release of the first stone does the second stone hit the water? This question really tripped me up for a while. They're just playing a little bit of some semantics games because the key to this problem is that they cause a single splash. Because when you think about it, you're like, how in the world am I supposed to figure, figure out part A with the information that they gave us? But they're just wording it really weird to try and trip you up, which it did to me. So. What happens is, well, let's just draw it. We say that they're over a pool of water, and then we have a cliff here that's 50 meters high, and then our rock climber is up here. We'll say they're at the top. And then they throw one stone down, and then a second stone. They say that they hit the water at the exact same time. So for part A, essentially what they're saying is how long is the first stone in the air? Since they hit the, the water at the exact same time, they're saying how long after the release of the first stone do they both hit the water? So how long is the first stone in the air is what we're trying to solve for. All right, but first let's write down a list of the variables that they give us. So we know that the delta y is 50 meters and you can set it a couple different ways. Like you could say that the top of the cliff, the 50 meters is y equals zero, so it's a negative 50. What we'll be doing is we'll be saying that right at the water, that is y equals zero. So we have a positive 50 meters. We know the initial velocity is a two meters per second, and that is going in the negative y direction. So we have a negative two meters per second, even though we're starting out at a positive y. And of course, we don't know what the time is, so we'll be sol solving for that, of course. So as far as which equation to use, the one that we'll be using for the first one is y final is equal to y initial plus velocity initial times time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. We can simplify this a little bit because we set the y final as zero. So that will go away. So now when we rewrite this, I'm gonna rewrite it just slightly differently. So we have one half acceleration times time squared plus velocity initial times time plus y initial. So I basically just flip flop the equation and you're gonna see why here in just a second. So what we just did is we just created a x squared plus b x plus c. So x in this case is time, which we're trying to solve for. So yes, my friends, we just created a quadratic equation. So when we plug in the values here, we have zero is equal to one half times the acceleration, which is gravity, since we're talking about free fall. So we have one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared plus b is our initial velocity, which we said is negative two meters per second times time plus c is 50 meters. So our a in this case is going to be one half times negative 9.8, which is negative 4.9. B is negative two, of course, and c is a positive 50. So now, of course, you can go and you can solve this manually with the quadratic formula, the negative b plus or minus the square root of four ac, yada, yada. But that is terrible. Having to do that on the test is the worst. I had to do it once because I didn't have a calculator that had a quadratic formula in it, and it was the worst. I didn't do well on the, the problem. So do yourselves a favor, get this calculator. We've talked about it a ton on the channel, and there's other ones you can use. This is my personal favorite. So we're going to hit second and down to polysolver, and then we're going to hit right here, number one, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Perfect. We already said a is negative 4.9 and already have that in there. Now b, we're gonna change that to a negative two and c we have as 50. So when we hit enter, our x1 is either, we'll round that to three seconds or a negative 3.4 seconds. So x is equal to either three seconds or negative 3.4 seconds. And obviously we can't have a negative time. So the answer for part a 
is three seconds or how long the rot one was in the air or the way they say it how long after the release of the first stone does the second stone hit the water so now let's move on to the second part for part b they want to know what the initial speed of the second stone was so for part b we need to figure out first what our t is we just solved for it right so t is equal to three seconds well not so fast they said that it, the second stone was released one second after the first one. So we need to take three seconds minus one second. So the total time that it was in the air is two seconds. Now we know the y initial, just like we did in the first part, is going to be the exact same. So 50 meters. Y final, of course, is zero meters. The velocity initial, we don't know. That's what we're trying to solve for. And y final, we don't know that either. Acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or negative g. And now, which equation are we going to use for this one? Well, we're going to be using the exact same one. So we have y final is equal to y initial plus velocity initial times the time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. So let's go through and simplify this as well. Y final, just like in the last one, is zero. And we can move Y initial over. So we have negative Y initial because we subtracted it over is equal to V initial times time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. And we're trying to solve for the initial velocity. So let's subtract over the one half AT squared. So now we have V initial times time is equal to negative Y initial minus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. And then we'll divide both sides by T, of course. So that goes away. So V initial finally is equal to Y initial minus subtract one half A T squared. And all of that will be over the time. So now let's come over here to the side and plug all our values in. So velocity initial is equal to negative y initial is 50 meters minus one half times the acceleration, which is a negative g or negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time, which we said was two seconds for this part of the problem. I'm going to put all of that in parentheses and we'll divide that whole portion right there by the time, which again is two seconds. Okay, so now let's plug this into our calculator and we have a negative 50 minus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times the time squared, which was two. So two squared, we could have just put four. Let's not mess that up. So we have times two squared. Okay, and now we're gonna divide all that by two. So we have a negative 15.2 meters per second. So negative 15.2 meters per second is the initial speed of the second rock. So now let's go up and see what they wanted for part C. And what is the speed of each stone as it hits the water? So the equation that we'll be using for this is V final is equal to V initial plus the acceleration times the time squared. So let's do stone number one first. So we have V final and we'll put one for stone number one is equal to negative two meters per second plus acceleration in this case is gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we'll multiply that by the time for the first stone was three seconds. So we have negative two plus a negative 9.8 times three. So for the final speed of the first stone is, well, let's round that to a negative 31. So we have negative 31 meters per second. And now let's do the exact same thing for the second stone. So V final for two is going to be equal to negative 15.2 meters per second plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we'll multiply that by the time for the second stone, which was two seconds. So now we have negative 15, 15.2 plus negative 9.8 times 2. The final velocity for the second stone is, let's round that to negative 35 meters per second. So here's the answer for part C. Stone number one was 31 meters per second and stone two was 35 meters per second for the final velocities before they hit the water.